Hello, everyone. So welcome to the Pacific Parkland Foundation. This is our very first bedtime nature story. And I know there are a lot of kids out there and parents tonight. So our goal is to get started as quickly as possible. And first, I get to do a few introductions. So my name is Janet Antonio, and I'm the executive director of the Pacific Parklands Foundation. I love parks. I love nature. And I'm super lucky because my job is to find ways to make Metro Vancouver Regional Parks the best that they can be for everyone and to connect people like the kids we have tonight, the parents we have tonight, friends, families, to connect people to nature, so plants and animals and the outdoor. So I consider myself very lucky to be able to do that. Uh, we are gonna get started in just a very short while, so now's the time to get comfy. But before we begin, uh, I have something that I think is important, and I hope that uh, you'll put your listening ears on and listen very carefully. So for myself, my grandparents moved to Canada over 100 years ago. And before they came here, before the buildings we lived in were built, or there were even roads to travel on, there were already people living here who called this place home. And so what we now call Metro Vancouver is the traditional territories of the Coast Salish First Nations. And when you go outside to play or to walk in the forest or spend time with your friends, I think it's important to know this so that we can always be respectful and grateful that we're able to share this beautiful land that we live in. Now, it's time to get started with the story, which I know you're all looking forward to. So it is my pleasure to introduce you to Zoe Slater. She's a park interpreter with Metro Vancouver Regional Parks, and I know she has a very special time planned for you. I've had the pleasure of seeing her present before, and she's always very creative and fun. So time to get cozy, settle down, and I will now pass it over to you, Zoe. Hello, everyone. Thanks, Janet, for the introduction. So I'm so excited to be here with everybody for our first Bedtime Nature Stories. So this is our first one, so we're very excited to be here with all of you tonight. So you can see me, unfortunately I can't see you, but I'm gonna try and make this a really fun and exciting night for everyone. So tonight I'm gonna tell you the story of the three bears. However, before I do that, I wanna introduce you to one of the stars of the story. And that star is, the black bear or Ursus Americanus. So black bears are very widespread across the province of British Columbia where we live. There's anywhere from about 120 to 150,000 black bears all across British Columbia. Now we have one other bear that we have in this province and it's called the grizzly bear. Now we don't have the grizzly bears in the lower mainland or on Vancouver Island or the central interior but we do have them throughout um, parts of the rest of the province, but not down here where we live. And there's about 15,000 grizzly bears in British Columbia. Now, why are black bears called black bears? Well, you're gonna say, Zoe, well, because they're black. That's why they're called black bears. Well, are they though? So believe it or not, black bears are not always black in color. So yes, it's very common that black bears have that beautiful jet black fur, but black bears can also be dark brown, they can be cinnamon in color, they can even be white. Maybe some of you have heard of the spirit bear before that lives in the Great Bear Rainforest, and this bear is a black bear that has white fur and they're very rare, and they're very special, and they're actually the provincial mammal of British Columbia. And then recently, I just learned about another cool black bear, the glacier black bear that lives in Alaska, that has blue-tinged fur, if you can believe it. So, they have the name of the black bear, but sometimes you'll see them in lots of different colors. So let's learn a little bit more about the characteristics of black bears. So here's a slide that shows the difference between the grizzly bear that I talked about and the black bears. So grizzly bears, as you can see, are quite a bit bigger than black bears, and they have this hump on their back that black bears don't have. 
But one of the really cool features that I like to see the difference between the two is the claws. So look at this. I'm going to show you here. Can you see that claw? Look at that. So that claw, you see my finger's not even as big as that claw. So this is a grizzly bear claw. Now let's look at a black bear claw, compare. Wow, it's quite a bit smaller. So with these two different types of claws, what does that mean for these bears? Well, with this big claw, grizzly bears are awesome at digging. So they will dig, dig, dig. What are they digging for? They're digging for roots because they eat roots. They might be digging for small animals to eat. And maybe they're even excavating out a den to sleep in. Now, what about the black bears? What do these do with these shorter claws? Well, black bears are awesome climbers and these short claws enable them to be really great climbers. They also use these claws to dig and tear away parts of uh, logs and things like that when they're trying to get at insects. The other thing you'll notice between the difference of grizzly bears and black bears and their paws is that black bear paws slightly curve in and again, this helps for climbing. You maybe have seen pictures of black bears before and they're up in trees or they send their cubs up into trees for safety. So this is a really important feature for black bears. Now, if any of you have ever done a Zoom uh, webinar before, maybe you have, maybe you haven't, but we're gonna do a little poll. So my friend Jeff is in the background and he's gonna pull up a poll for you and I want you to answer the question. So we'll wait, Jeff's gonna pull that up. All right, so I want you to think, what do you think is a bear's strongest sense? Do you think it's its eyesight? Do you think it's its smell? Do you think it's its hearing? Or do you think it's its touch? What do you think? I'll just wait for you guys to answer and see what you think. Hmm, I wonder. So I'm Jeff here in the background, and uh, I'm like the Wizard of Oz, you can't see me. <laughs> and um, yeah, keep on voting, that's great. <clears throat> I also wanna remind people while I'm speaking is that there is a chat box at the bottom of your screen and you're welcome to type in there anytime if you have anything to say. So I'm still waiting for a few people here. All right, I'm excited okay, to see what you guys think. Here we go. Ooh, smell. So it looks like the majority of you thought smell and a few hearing and touch. Well, let's see what the answer is. Oh, aren't you smart, you little smarty pants? Yeah, the sense of smell is what a bear uses a lot. They do have good eyesight and they do have excellent hearing, but yes, that sense of smell is so important for bears. So you'll see there's a funny picture on there that's a picture of a skull. And I've got a skull here that I'm gonna show and I'm gonna hold up to my camera. So if you can see, this is a bear skull. And inside the, that nasal cavity is kind of a honeycomb-like structure. So can you see inside there? Yeah, there we go, inside there. So that structure inside the nasal cavity of the bear creates a whole bunch of extra surface area. So what that means is that bears can smell really well with all that extra area in order to get all those scent particles. And believe it or not, a black bear can smell something over one kilometer away. So that would be like lining up 73 school buses in a row and the bear could still smell what it is way on the other side of that. So. Smelling is really important for bears for looking for food and things like that. It's also really important for them to communicate with each other. So they will use uh, a scent um, between each other to communicate with other bears. Now, a lot of times we're not gonna see bears in the forest or when we go into regional parks, but we can take a guess that they're there by the signs that they leave behind. So what are some of the signs that a bear leaves behind? Well, bears often will scratch on trees to leave a sign, or they might leave their footprints behind in the mud. Bears even sometimes will bite off chunks of bark on a tree. So that's one sign they could leave too. But one of the most common signs that we see, especially in our, some of our parks, 
is bear poop, or as biologists call it, bear scat. So you can see the picture there. So bear uh, poop is usually in quite a big pile there. It's kind of tubular in shape and it's often black like that, but it can look different depending on what the bear is eating. So if a bear is eating a lot of fruit and things like that, berries, there might be a lot of seeds in there. So it can change depending on the time of year. Now, the other thing a bear might leave behind is a little tuft of fur. Now, how do you think the bear left that little tuft of fur behind? Well, let's look. Oh, can you see this fellow? What's he doing? Is he scratching his back? Is he doing the bear dance? Well, actually what this bear do, is doing is leaving his mark. So this is in spring and this bear right now, he says, hey ladies, I'm looking for a girlfriend. So he's gonna leave his scent behind to let all the ladies in the forest know that he's looking for a girlfriend. And when he does that, he might leave a little tuft of hair behind. So that's what that fellow's doing. All right, I'm gonna do another quiz with you. So Jeff's gonna pull it up for us. And I wanna know from you, what do you think is the size of a bear cub when it's born? So do you think it's half a pound, which is about an apple? Do you think it's two pounds, which is about the weight of two cans of soup? Do you think it's five pounds, like a bag of sugar? Or do you think it's a 10 pounds, like a baby? So I know not all babies are 10 pounds, but I did have a 10 pound baby, but. <laughs> so what do you think? How big is a bear cup? So okay. yeah, go ahead, Jeff. Still waiting, still waiting. So female bears, they are pretty big. They can be anywhere from about 90 pounds up to 300 pounds for a female black bear. So quite big animals. Okay, still waiting here. I'm gonna see. You guys are pretty good on the first one. Let's see if you can get this one. I don't know. Not looking good. <laughs> Okay. Jeff knows the answer. <laughs> I know the answer. Okay, I'm going to end it now. Here we go and show the results. All right, let's see. Okay, so it's kind of all over the board. So definitely the majority of you thought about the size of a 10 pound baby and then some of you about five pounds, two pounds. Well, guess what? The few of you that thought that the ba ba back, oh, excuse me, black bear cubs are half a pound are correct. Believe it or not, they are that small when they are born. Isn't that crazy for such a large animal? So the bear cubs are gonna be born inside the den in the, in the fall winter time when the female's in there. And they are gonna get quite big while the mom's in the den and they're gonna um, nestle or suck on the mom's milk. So I'm gonna play a sound for you. It's gonna be an odd sound. Just hang on, listen to this. So believe it or not, that funny little sound is the sound of bear cubs uh, nursing from their mum. So they make this purring, suckling noise. So that's what they're doing. Weird, huh? So mama bears can have anywhere from about one to six cubs, but six is not very common. And even this mum with four cubs is not super common. Around two cubs is generally more what happens. And moms are very good at taking care of their cubs. And cubs can get quite upset if they get um, away from their mom. So let's listen to what happens with a little upset bear cub, what he sounds like. <laughs> Isn't that hard to hear that poor little guy's maybe been separated from his mama. So she will come and help him out soon uh, so he's not so upset. So uh, uh, black bears, uh, the mums and the cubs will stay together for the first year. So she'll have the cubs um, with her in the den, but the next year they will den together but then um, they leave uh, on their own. So look at this, see what we caught. This is from a wildlife camera at one of our regional parks and you can see. 
So if you see there, you see that there's a mama and you can see a cub that's quite large. <clears throat> so this is what we call a yearling. So this cub will be with that mom for a year and then on the second year, she'll send that cub, cub out to be on their own. So now let's talk about what bears are eating. So I have some pictures here of what bears eat. So I have pictures of wild bears and I have pictures of what urban bears. So probably many of us are starting to see more and more bears in our neighborhoods and even in our backyards. Yes, I've had a black bear in my backyard before. So what are wild bears eating though? So wild bears are eating things like salmon, they're eating um, berries, their roots, uh, dandelions, grasses. So believe it or not, um, bear, bears eat 80 to 95 percent vegetation. So they actually don't eat that much meat, but they will eat some meat things like some small mammals or even um, if they find carrion, which is dead animals. But the majority of the time they're going to be eating berries and vegetation, dandelions, all those things. However, what's happening more and more is we have bears coming into our communities and finding that, hey, these human guys, they leave lots of good stuff around for us bears to eat. So when I had a bear in my backyard, it was because it went after a bird feeder. So guess what? I no longer feed the bears or the birds because I live in bear country. Other things bears will go for is pet food. Uh, sometimes people feed their pets outdoors or just garbage. Believe it or not, you know, I told you about that really good sense of smells. Bears will be attracted to the scent of smell of a dirty diaper. So they will come into your, your neighborhood and get into your garbage and all sorts of things. So it's really important that we try to manage our attractants in our backyards. And so now I have a really fun quiz for you. It's our last one. So you might recognize some of these bears. They're cartoon bears. For some of the kids, you might not know some of them, but hopefully the parents can help out. But I wanna know from you, which of these cartoon bears do you think is the best example of a wild bear based on their diet? So you maybe know what some of these bears eat. What do you think, who is the best example of a wild bear? Do you think it's Winnie the Pooh? Do you think it's Paddington Bear? Do you think it's Yogi the Bear? Or do you think it's Baloo from Jungle Book? What do you think? Who's the best example of a wild bear? Okay, the votes are still coming in. I'll give All people right. another few seconds here. And then we're gonna end it because you gotta get started with your story. I'm sure people are waiting for the story now. Okay, I'm gonna end the polling now and show the results. All right. Oh, yes, you guys did so good. Baloo from the Jungle Book. If some of you remember, Baloo teaches Mowgli that ants are an important source of, an, of a bear's diet. And absolutely, ants are. So uh, bears will go after the ants and the larvae. So for example, Winnie the Pooh eats honey, bears will go into beehives, but they're looking for the larvae. And we certainly don't want them to be eating marmalade sandwiches or picnic baskets. So what's happened before winter? Uh, bears go into something called hyperphagia where they're eating 20,000 calories a day. Can you believe it? 20,000 calories. So what does that mean? That means you would have to eat 80 McDonald's hamburgers in one day or 133 wagon wheels in one day or 385 apples in one day and then in the next day and the next day or a thousand packets of ketchup. So that's how much bears are eating. So what are our bears doing right now? Well, they're in their dens right now. So they're in caves or they're in hollow trees and they're having a rest. So hopefully that was a little bit of fun information about black bears, but like Jeff said, let's get to the story. So this is a picture of Harper and Harper is like the black bears is another uh, star in my story. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for a sec. All right. So once upon a time, there was a little girl named Harper. She was a very curious little girl, 
Harper loved nature and animals, and she had many pets, including two cats, a dog, a guinea pig, and a gecko. She also loved the animals of the forest and would often visit the forest with her family. She would love to watch the Douglas squirrels as they scurried about for seeds and nuts. And she also loved to listen to the birds, like the Stellar's Jay. Now one day when little Harper was playing in her yard, she saw a beautiful swallowtail butterfly flying from plant to plant and she started to follow it. Little did Harper know that the swallowtail butterfly was looking for an alder tree to lay her eggs on and Harper followed her right into Kanaka Creek Regional Park. Now Harper had been to the park before with her family, but this time she was all on her own and a bit distracted. She followed the butterfly for a while until she saw a snowshoe hare out of the corner of her eye. She knew that she didn't want to scare it and chase it away, so she laid in the grass quietly observing the hare nibble on some wild strawberries. After a while, the hare hopped off into the forest and Harper slowly followed, not realizing she had left the path behind. Now, normally Harper knew that when you were out in the forest, you always stay on the trail because you don't want to get lost but she was so distracted by all the sights and the smells and the sounds, she ended up getting lost. Just as she realized that she was lost, the clouds started to roll in and she heard a rumble of thunder and it started to pour rain. She quickly looked around for a place she could take shelter from the rain and she saw a large cave, which she quickly ran into. Oh, it felt so nice to be out of the rain. She was soaking wet. And surprisingly, the cave was quite warm and cozy. As Harper started to look around the cave, her stomach grumbled. You see, she realized she had ran out before she could eat her lunch. So as she sat there thinking of her peanut butter and jelly sandwich she was missing out on, she started to smell something. Oh boy, she said, there must be food in this cave. So Harper went over to where the smell was coming from. But as she got closer, it got stinkier and stinkier. Phew wee, she said, what stinks? As she looked down, she saw a dead salmon. Harper thought, well, how bad could it be? People eat sushi all the time. So she picked up the salmon and gave it a big lick. Ew! This salmon is too slimy and stinky to eat. Oh, the next thing she saw was a pile of something that looked like white rice. Yum, I love rice, she said, and Harper picked up a big handful, but she quickly realized it was not rice. It was ant larva. Even though she knew that in many cultures, insects are considered a delicacy and an important food source, she had never eaten an insect before and she just couldn't do it. Oh, this ant larva is too squishy and squirmy to eat. And she quickly dropped it back on the ground. Oh, just as she was thinking she would not find anything in the cave she could eat, she saw a pile of beautiful orangey red berries. She had been taught that you never eat anything in the forest because one, you don't know if it'll make you sick. And two, you always leave the food for the forest animals. But Harper felt so hungry and was sure she knew exactly what these berries were because her mother had taught her and they had planted this berry bush in their native plant garden. They were salmon berries. Harper quickly gobbled up the salmon berries. They were just right. Now, at this point, Harper was getting tired. Oh, oh. The salmon berries had filled her belly and the cave was actually quite warm and cozy. Harper decided it might be nice to lay down and on the other side of the cave she saw what looked like some kind of beds that some animals must have been made. The first bed was made out of branches and sticks. When she laid on it, it didn't feel comfortable at all. This bed is too hard and pokey, she said. She looked over at the next bed. It looked much softer. It was a pile of shredded tree bark. Harper lay down on the bed and tried to get comfortable. Oh, something wasn't right. This bed is too itchy. 
Finally, Harper tried the last bed, which is a bit smaller, but just her size. It was made of leaves and grass. It felt so comfortable that Harper fell right asleep. <sighs> Meanwhile, not far from the cave in the forest were three bears. There was a papa bear, a mama bear, and a baby bear cub. The bears had gone down to take a dip in the creek. How the three of them loved and enjoyed splashing about in the water. But now they were hungry and planned to return to their den and eat the food they stored there. And believe it or not, their den was the cave that Harper had slipped into. As the bears entered the cave, they knew something wasn't quite right. You see, bears have an excellent sense of smell and they could smell something unfamiliar to them. But the bears were hungry, so they brushed it off and went to eat their food. First, Papa Bear looked at his salmon and said to Mama and Baby Bear, Someone has been eating my salmon. Now, of course, bears don't talk like you and I. Papa Bear said this in bear language, which is like kind of like huffs and grunts. Then Mama Bear looked at her ant larva and she said, Someone has been eating my ant larva. Oh, no. Finally, Baby Bear searched for his salmon berries and couldn't find them anywhere. Baby Bear said in bear language, Someone has been eating my salmon berries and they're all going. The bears were quite annoyed that someone had come into their den and eaten their food. I mean, who goes into a bear den anyways? The bears decided to lay down and rest. First, Papa Bear went to lay on his bed made of branches but it didn't seem quite right. Someone has been sleeping in my bed, he said gruffly. Then Mama Bear tried her bed. I think someone has been sleeping in my bed. Finally, Baby Bear, who was hungry and grumpy at this point, just wanted to lay down, but his bed, when he, when he went to his bed, he saw something so unbelievable something as a baby cub he had never seen before. It was a little girl. Well, he didn't actually know that because he had never seen a little girl before, but he definitely knew that someone or something was in his bed. So Baby Bear screamed, ah! Someone has been sleeping on my bed and it's still there! Mama and Papa Bear were shocked to see a small human in their den. Bears are actually quite shy creatures and often do their best to avoid humans. Meanwhile, Baby Bear continued to cry out in frustration. Ah! Ah! And all that noise woke up Harper. In that moment, Harper realized her terrible mistake. She wanted to run as fast as she could, but she stayed calm and slowly backed out of the cave. The Bear family was surely annoyed, but as they realized that the little human was no threat, they settled in for an afternoon nap. Once Harper was out of the cave, she carefully retraced her steps and found her way back to the path and then headed home. Harper's mother was so happy to see her. She had been so worried about her little adventure and had been looking everywhere for her. Harper shared her amazing story and her mother was definitely in shock. Harper visited Kanaka Creek Regional Park a few days later as it was one of her favorite places to be. But this time she was not alone, she was with her family. They enjoyed watching the butterflies fly and listening to the birds chirp, but they always stayed on the path. Just as Harper and her family were getting ready to head home, they saw a family of bears in the distance. The smallest one stood up on his back legs, a common thing curious bears do in order to smell and see better. The little bear got a good sniff and knew exactly who it was. The little bear gave out a little call as if to say, hello. And Harper just stood with a huge grin on her face as she waved back. And that is the story of the three bears. The end. Thank you, Zoe. That was so wonderful. I'm pretty sure that if, uh, if you could if you could see and hear everyone you'd see everyone applauding i had no idea you could make your voice so low <laughs> <laughs>
Um, I am sharing my screen with everybody because we're wrapping this up, but I hope everyone enjoyed that as much as I did. And I hope that you will visit our website, uh, the Facebook page and register for our next session, which is next week, which is Owl Moon. Uh, so that's it for me. Thank you again, Zoe, and thank you to everyone.